guys, I'm Adam from Top Dog. It's another one of those bittersweet progress videos. They're bittersweet because of the fact that it means that the dogs are getting close to time to go home. They're sweet because we get to look at all the progress that these guys have made. This is Kai, the German Shepherd, and uh, we're gonna be running through some of her basic commands. This is a quick little help for like the around the house type obedience, the things that you're gonna be doing every single day. During the go home lesson, we'll be going way more in depth and talking about all of like the uh, more advanced obedience, how to reinforce everything, how to correct everything, but this is just a quick little like clip notes or cheat sheet guide for you. Um, so we're going to start off with our most important command and that's the let's go command. The let's go command is what we use to tell the dog that it's time to go for a walk for us and to be in an appropriate position, not pulling, sniffing, yanking on us, all that type of thing. So we tell her let's go and we take off and when we walk with the dog, we expect that the dog turns with us stops with us, we start, they start, we stop, they stop. Now there's three important things that you need to make sure that you're doing if you expect your dog to be doing the right thing as well. And those three things are that we keep our eyes up and not focused on the dog. That's important in canine communication. If we're just focused on the dog all the time, they start feeling like they're in charge. Second thing is we keep our body language nice and relaxed. We don't want to be all tense. The dog's going to think that that's weird and that tension is gonna travel down the leash to the dog and they're gonna get tense. Eyes up, body language relaxed. And then third, we've got that proper leash length where we're not too tight trying to choke the dog into position, but also not so loose that we can't give the dog any input until they're all the way to the handle six feet away from us. So again, eyes up, body language relaxed, proper leash length, let's go. And then we go for our walk around the neighborhood with our dog. Our second command is not quite as important as the let's go command. But it is very, very useful. It's probably the most used command. The reason why let's go is so important is because it creates that leadership bond between you and your dog. The place command is our second command. Place. And that's where we tell the dog to go to their place or their dog bed. It can be a sheet, a towel, a blanket, anything that creates some kind of boundary for the dog. And we tell them to go there and stay there until we release them. Free. Free is her release command. So the way that that looks kind of all start to finish is we walk the dog up, we point to the object we want, place. All four paws go on there, we tell them good job, and then the dog just stays there until we release them. Now, <clears throat> when you're practicing this at home, it's important that you're always trying to set new and bigger goals for yourself. And Kai has given us a good example right now of how we accept anything as long as all four paws stay on the bed. She's allowed to sit down, stand up, turn around, get comfortable, it's all fine with us, she just has to stay on the bed. So, like I said, we're always trying to set goals to improve. So the areas where you should be looking to improve are what we call our three Ds. Distance, how far away you can get from your dog. When we first started working with her, we'd take one step away and she'd want to try to come right with us again, okay? So we build up that distance. Second D is distractions. Things like, oh, I don't know, you've got a kid that wants to run past or uh, maybe you could use something around the house like some dog toys. Good. as a distraction. So you want to try to practice with her. You want to build up by using these distractions to help her make improvements. And you saw there she got a little excited and then caught herself. That's a great act of impulse control. That's why the placement is so useful because it teaches them impulse control. So you can use little distractions and things to distract the dog. Um, and then our third D is duration. And that's what I'm doing right now. Duration is just how long we expect the dog to stay on there. Again, if we go back to her first days, she couldn't stay on there for more than five seconds. You know, she'd get squirmy and want to pop off. She had no impulse control. You drop a toy on the ground, heck, she's going to get it right away. Now, we built those three Ds, distance, distraction, duration. Now, the common question we have is how to correct this if the dog makes a mistake. If the dog tries to come off, we use what's called spatial pressure. That's where we use our body language to tell the dog that they've made a mistake. We also pair it with a verbal reprimand. So I'm gonna pretend that this line on the floor right here is the dog bed because I don't wanna correct her right now because she's not doing anything wrong. She tries to pop off, I step into the dog bed and say, ah, ah. And then she knows to back up because I'm invading her personal space, okay? So if she tries to pop off, step in like you mean it, look like a tough guy, tell her, ah, ah. And then you back off again. She knows, oh, okay, I made a mistake. She backs up, she settles back in on place. Free. Good girl. Yeah, you can get it now. When you tell your dog free, basically it means you can punch out of work. You can be a dog now. So remember that. When you tell the dog to do something, they keep doing it until you release them. Good girl. There you go. 
Anytime we tell a dog to do something, we have what's called an implied stay. I'm going to demonstrate that, that now with our sit command. Okay, sit. Notice how I don't use the word stay, and but I expect her to stay. Same thing with place. You didn't hear me say stay. Same thing with let's go. You didn't hear me keep repeating the command. Anytime I tell a dog to do something, it's implied that they keep doing it until I tell them F-R-E-E. -E. Free. Then they're allowed to get up. They no longer have to continue doing that command. That's going to be the same for everything. Let's go, place, sit, down, wait. All of those commands, we expect the dog to keep doing it. Next command I want to show you. Place. I'm going to use the place command to help me out with the come command. With the come command, there's a couple of really important rules, just like with everything else. First off, actually, I'm going to move her over so you can see more from the side. Place. Good girl. First off, with the place command, we expect the dog to come to us and do what we call an automatic sit. I'm going to put these toys back away here. And what that looks like is that when we call the dog, they come and they sit right in front of us before they get any kind of reward. Now with the come command, I like to reward very frequently to make it very motivating for the dog. Most people don't think about it, but they've accidentally trained their dog not to come to them because they've always made it a negative thing, like when they're putting their dog in the crate or when the dog's in trouble or something like that. I try to motivate the dogs to come to me so that way I'm always the most exciting thing for the dog. So I'm going to call the dog and I'm always going to be consistent about how I call the dog. That's really important. Some people call their dog and it's like, Rover, come here, Rover, here, Rover, come. And they're always changing up so the dog's confused. With us, the way that we've trained her is we use the name first, then the word come. Kai, come! When she gets to us, she'll do that automatic sit, and then she can have her reward. Good girl, free. Good, and she stays seated until I tell her free, and then I can reward her, play with her. Like I said, I want coming to me to be a fun and exciting thing, okay? Good girl. I'm gonna demonstrate one more time. Place. Here, let's do it more from the side. Place. Good girl. Again, the name first, then the word come. Kai, come! She comes, she sits, she gets a reward. It can be affection, it can be food, it can be a toy. Free! And she stays seated until I tell her free. Good girl, place. The last command I want to demonstrate is our wait command. Now, this is one that was really important for Kai because she loves to bolt out of doors and gates and things like that. So, for her safety, for our safety, making sure she doesn't knock us over and stuff, we taught her to wait at thresholds. So I'm just going to use this stick and a couple of cones to be my threshold. So this is what you would pretend like. This is like a doorway at home when you're letting her outside. Free. And you walk up to that doorway, you open the door, you tell her, wait. You go across first, and the dog doesn't come across until you tell them, free. Then they are allowed to come across. Good girl. Place. The correction for that, if she were to make a mistake, is going to look the exact same as on the place command, where if she tries to step across, all I'm going to do is step into her and tell her, nope, I own that space. Again, this is a really important one. You know, Kai's got a young toddler at home, um, and the way that she was bolting through doors and stuff when she first got here would easily knock over a little kid, or if she hit that door too hard, could swing it wide open and hit somebody's toe and break it or something like that. So we've really taught her to be a lot more controlled through these spaces. Well, guys, I think that's it. We're looking forward to working with you in your go-home lesson. Kai's been an absolute dream to work with. We really, love, we really have loved her here, and uh, we can't wait till you guys get to come pick her up. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam. That's Kai. And that's our progress video.